So uh, in preparing for this, I thought, you know, I'm a little bit of an overachiever. Why share just one failure when I can share three? <laughs> there you go. Uh, and that's a very small number relative to all of mine. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, and for each one of these, I will share a lesson that I hope you can take away from my failure and eventual success. So uh, my first failure, the, the setup to this, is a very unconventional beginning, uh, both to my education and to my career. Uh, I finished high school a year early, and I was encouraged to go early admission to college, and I was encouraged to go to a community college. So I started off my college career at Schenectady County Community College, and I was a computer science major. And uh, the beginning of, of my education was great, uh, but the other unconventional bit was that uh, I started working, uh, and I, I had to work, uh, but I started working uh, part-time for a bank in the Northeast called Fleet. And uh, this was a fun kind of like after school, like nights and weekends kind of job, but it was really, really boring uh, <laughs> because nothing was going on. And so I had the idea to just start volunteering and writing some software to fix bugs and things that were going on in the department that I was in. And eventually that caught the attention of the management there. And uh, very unconventionally, I ended up getting a full-time job offer to be a junior software developer after literally just three semesters of undergrad. And so I thought, well, geez, this is absolutely the thing that I want to do with my life. I, you know, I wanted to be a software developer, so I, I took the job. And uh, that leads up to the kind of circumstances around uh, the, the failure. And I, you, you don't have to search. I'll show you in a second. Uh, but you can probably have a sense for what's about to happen. So uh, in the summer of 1999, I find myself now going to school part-time because I'm working full-time. And I want to finish my degree. And in the summer of 1999, I'm enrolled in Calc 2, and uh, I got an FX. An FX uh, was a failure related to attendance. About halfway through what was already a very short semester, it became very clear to me that I was not going to pass. And uh, being ever the pragmatist, I just stopped showing up. Um, but uh, that aside, it was, this was actually really troubling. Um, you know, for folks in here who might be computer science majors, uh, there's no pathway to having a comp sci degree without going through Calc 2. This wasn't like, uh, you know, some kind of uh, extracurriculum thing that I didn't need to pass. Like, I, I needed to pass. And uh, this was a big problem because uh, it really meant for me questioning, you know, geez, am I going to be able to finish this degree? Uh, but also, am I cut out for this? You know, the, like, you're a computer scientist. Like, you're supposed to be able to do math, you know? And uh, I wasn't sure what to do. I, I um, very seriously considered just quitting school and thinking, well, you know, I will figure out the career thing, uh, but maybe I just won't, won't do it with school. Uh, but ultimately, uh, what I decided was the smart thing to do was to figure out a way to tackle this Calc 2 thing. And so I re-enrolled in the fall semester, and so after failing Calc 2 um, in the, the late 1990s, uh, I ended up passing, barely. It was not, it was not a great performance, uh, but I passed. And uh, what that meant, though, was that my uh, education took a much slower kind of process after that, because I did want to focus on my career, uh, but that meant that school was going to go much, much slower. And in fact, I didn't even finish my associates until the end of 20, uh, 2002, and uh, it took me another seven years to finish my bachelor's in computer science. And so uh, what I hope you will take away from this is that failure isn't forever. Uh, I could have, in that moment of the summer of 1999, just said, you know what, I'm not going to be successful with this. It's going to be you know, just impossibly hard. Uh, I could just give up. Um, the way that I was able to succeed was by realizing that I needed to take a slightly different approach. I needed to go slower if I was going to focus on my career. I needed to put the hard classes into longer semesters uh, because of the course <laughs> load, uh, you know, but it, but it was doable. It, but it took longer than I expected, longer than I wanted. So uh, that is the setup to uh, the next kind of stage of, of my life, though. And in 2008, uh, I found myself, I moved to Charlotte. I was working for a much bigger bank at this point. 
And although in 2008, some of you um, may know or have studied, uh, there was a global financial crisis and things were not super great in the macroeconomic uh, sense, for me, where I was at in my career, uh, things were awesome. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of opportunity in the area that I was uh, working in. And I had been uh, selected to help lead this massive multi-year project for this really big bank. And uh, this was the, the career opportunity of a lifetime. And uh, over the next three years, just amazing things seemed to be happening. I uh, personally recruited over 100 people to this effort. I got promoted a couple times. I was traveling every other week to San Francisco. But to make this project work, it was also a tremendous amount of, of personal sacrifice in addition to professional work. And uh, despite working very, very hard, not just myself, but the entire team, uh, we found ourselves in 2011 with the project being canceled. Now, the project wasn't canceled because of anything I personally did or anyone else personally did on the project. This is life sometimes in corporate America. Uh, but for me, it was absolutely devastating. It was th three and a half years or more of personal blood, sweat, and tears, using my personal reputation to recruit all these people to something that was supposed to be this career-altering, completely life-changing thing. And then just one day, it doesn't exist. And so uh, it felt like a, a serious failure and also a, a huge waste of time. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it was really, it was really pretty stunning. Uh, but there is something that happened during that period of time that I, I didn't mention. And that was a, a thing that I'm sure no one in here has heard of called Clear Exchange. Um, it was a very small project relative to the other things that I was working on uh, that I got pulled into. And no one's heard of Clear Exchange, uh, but what you may have heard of is what it became, which is Zelle. Um, so in 2016, the work that we did to create Clear Exchange, there was a lot of people involved with it. I'm by no means I'm the only person who, who was involved. Um, but Clear Exchange became Zelle, a money movement app that's similar to, to Venmo and Cash. Uh, and uh, fast forward to now, and over 1,800 banks are using this technology. It moves more money than Cash and Square combined. Uh, but sitting there when this was going on in 2011, I had no idea what the future was going to hold for that little tiny project that I was involved with. And so uh, now I can look back on it and say, well, geez, you know, there's like amazing articles being written in Forbes about it. Uh, but the lesson that I hope you take away from that is that sometimes failure masks an even bigger success. There is no way that I could have known in 2011 or 2012 that I could now look back on this and say, this is an amazing sense of pride for me and the, the uh, entire team who worked on it. Uh, so sometimes it, it takes a little bit of time to figure out what really is going to be the success. But coming on the heels of that, uh, as you can imagine, I was uh, pretty, pretty uh, I guess, burnt out from the experience that I'd had uh, working in, uh, in corporate America. And so I, I left and I started a company with another co-founder uh, called Reward Summit. We raised about $250,000 from friends and family. We launched this app. We got written about in Lifehacker. We had some articles written about us in Yahoo Finance. Uh, and things were going OK uh, until they weren't. Um, <laughs> in 2014, uh, despite having about 30,000 users and having some good press, obviously, we just weren't able to uh, monetize the application the way that we wanted. And so. Uh, you know, having not made any money for a while and realizing that that probably wouldn't work forever, uh, we started just doing some technology consulting on the side, uh, not really knowing what was going to come next. Uh, but what eventually came next was a company, we, we, we created a company around that, and that company eventually uh, became known as Level. And over uh, the next eight years or so, uh, we grew it to 225 people and eventually sold it to a publicly traded company uh, in London. Uh, absolutely enormous success for uh, everyone who was involved. And this is like the home run that you know, people, entrepreneurs, just dream of, of having. Uh, but again, uh, I would not have been able to do that had I not had the experience of my first startup failing. And so the lesson that I hope you take away from that is that sometimes Failure is the universe's way of just giving you permission to do something else, and that something else can be really incredible. And so the last thing I would just like to leave you all with is that a lot of times when we talk about success and failure, we hear about other people's uh, successes, what they've done, and we just see the successes, the things that are 
kind of above the timeline. And we think, geez, they were so successful, you know, just up and to the right the whole way, and, you know, nothing but home runs. And sometimes when we think about ourselves, we just think about the failures. We, we focus on these small things that feel really, really big to us in the moment. But the reality is that you can't have the successes without the failures along the way. So I hope that you take away from that that uh, just because you've had a failure doesn't mean that that's forever. That's just the stepping stone to, in the pursuit of greatness. So thank you.